Got to get your height right. Oh boy. Gonna take her on down today. This right here is at uh, three quarters of an inch. I've been cutting it about an inch. Most of the time, this Bermuda is 62 days old, I believe, something like that, from, from actual grass seed. So it has come in and matured with a quickness. I mean, like lightning fast. Good gracious, boy, it come in so hard and fast. Once it come in, we started mowing it and feeding it. It was all over, lights out. It just come on in, and I'm pretty tickled with the way it turned out. Hey there, it's Pete with GCI Turf. Whoops. They just stepped out of the office right there and looked over here at me. I can't do it now. Let's see what this is going to look like. Oh! Woo! Yeah, that's taking her on down right there. Hey there, it's Pete with GCI Turf. I hope you're having a great day today. Here's the deal. This is Bermuda grass, okay? One of the downfalls to Bermuda is it's being a warm season turf it goes dormant during the winter typically that dormancy starts eh, kind of around late august or so mid-august when the days start getting shorter and you'll notice the bermuda ain't really you know digging quite as good as it always has but it's natural it's gonna happen when the first killing frost comes meaning that first real hard frost this Bermuda would turn paper sack brown, kind of like the color of this dirt right here. People leave it that way all year, and that, hey, that's fine. I, I have absolutely no issues with it, as long as it's not in my yard, right? I like a green yard during the winter, but I wanted Bermuda here at my shop. That's what I wanted, so that's what I did. That's why I planted it here, I wanted it. But me being a green grass in the wintertime kind of guy means I have to do one of two things. I either have to paint the turf and make dyes and paints and things like that you can paint. Maybe one year we might even do that. I don't know. We'll see. Or the other option I have is to overseed it with a cool season turf. Okay? The majority of cool season turf is going to do good when it's cold or cool weather. And so that means fall, winter, spring, I would have a nice sea of green out here. And here goes your disclaimer, okay? Because this isn't for everybody. You understand, this isn't for everybody. This is not for everybody. Because this is what, what, here's kind of the process behind all that. I'm not planting the cool season turf as a permanent grass. This is my permanent grass. Okay, this is the final yard at the GCI office, okay? But it has a problem. And that problem is it goes dormant. And I don't like it, but there's nothing in the world I can do to change it. Except plant a cool season turf to cover up the brown. I'm hiding the brown, right? So typically, and you know, I'm not a real typical kind of guy, I, I like to break all the rules that we can in yard lawn care and see if we can do what they say you can't do, right? You would not do this to a first year Bermuda yard, okay? You just wouldn't. You would, you, your focus would be here on the Bermuda and let the Bermuda thrive and be, be full of joy and do all the cool things that Bermuda wants to do instead of invading it with a cool season turf as it's beginning to go to sleep and it's probably at its weakest point during the course of the year. So it's a big time no-no, right? Now established Bermuda yards that you've had for a while, yeah, people overseed them all the time. We've been overseeding athletic fields for years, 
okay and we don't have any problems with that it's first year uh, seed jobs or first year sprigging may even be on first year sod too you just don't want to overseed that uh, Bermuda with cool season turf. So with that said, I just said it out of my mouth, I'm gonna do it anyway, just to see what happens. You know, I'm only gonna have a first year Bermuda yard one time, because we planted it 60 days ago. I need to see how this overseed with rye reacts next spring, or see how the Bermuda reacts to it next spring. I won't know unless I try, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna split this thing right down the middle long ways so what we're going to do is we're going to come right through here right about middle ways and this side over here we're going to plant kentucky bluegrass okay and i'm going to get my blue muta one way or the other right so that's going to be over here and then from here over we're going to do rye grass okay this is going to be the exact same rye grass that we planted next uh last year uh in the strip I don't know, that strip was somewhere right about here, I believe. So that's what we're gonna do, and today I'm prepping for it. Now, when I'm prepping for it, I need to cut this down really low, okay? I'm, that's a three-quarter inch right here, and you can see it's gonna look nasty and yucky and blah when I cut it because I'm cutting all the color out of it, all the leaf materials up top. So, you know, that's gonna leave it kind of yucky looking, but I'm okay with that because this is Bermuda. It's a gift that keeps on giving, right? My buddy, gosh, I need to look him up and give him the credit for that saying. He's on my Instagram page. I cannot remember his name for nothing. I apologize. If I looked at your name, I know exactly who you are. I'm sorry, but, I, but I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go in and look and figure it out. And I'm gonna give you the credit for that because that was your saying. Uh, the Bermuda is the gift that keeps on giving. I can cut this joker clean to the ground if I, if I choose to and in a matter of a couple of weeks it's going to be bright nice and perky and nice and green. You know I can't do my fescue like that. If I went in and took my tall fescue and cut it clean down to the ground, chances of me killing that yard pretty good or doing extreme damage to it. So this is a Bermuda thing only. Look at there. A little bit of nut sedge coming up right there. So I'm going to take it down to three quarters of an inch, then I'm going to come right behind it, and we're going to take it down to a quarter inch today, all in one shot. Three quarter, we're going from an inch to three quarter down to a quarter, then come back in with a really big, strong reel mower and take it on down. And the reason I'm doing that is we're going into aerating and overseeding for, for fescue and things like that with my business. So the month of September, I'm gonna be a busy, busy joker. So, I need a quick way to jump on uh, the Ventrac, mow this thing really quickly, and be able to keep it down at that shorter cut, just for time reasons. In September, I'm just not gonna have time to do a lot of mowing with that uh, smaller reel mower. So that's why I'm doing it in this process, in case somebody wants to know. So, let's, uh, Let's mow. Man, I'm ready to mow, man. I've been stuck up in that daggone office all day. I'm ready to get out here and do something. So that fast, we're back here at the house, right? Uh, that microphone I got uh, that, you know, it tags onto your shirt, it, I don't know what happened. I went to edit the video and there was no sound on a lot of my uh, parts I was talking about. So I'm gonna do that here uh, while I'm pruning and talk you through the whole process and then put the mowing footage on the screen and we'll do it that way. So first things first, this is not advice for fescue, not advice for Kentucky bluegrass or anything like that. This is strictly a video for folks who have Bermuda, who do overseed with ryegrass in the uh, fall and or someone who wants to do that. So. Uh, I want to be extremely clear about that uh, so no one jacks their yard up. So why did I cut the Bermuda down really, really short? That's plain and simple. This Bermuda is incredibly thick and dense. I mean, it is super thick. So if you've been watching me for any time now, you know that seed to soil contact is king when it comes to seeding. So I'm actually cutting the Bermuda down really close to the ground to open up the canopy and expose the soil. 
that is the only reason I'm cutting it down so short prior to overseeding with these cool season grasses. Another reason is I need that germination to happen with the perennial rye and the Kentucky bluegrass before the Bermuda kicks back in gear and makes a late charge uh, during the summer. Now those of you that have used perennial rye before you know it germinates incredibly fast and you can almost throw it on a rock and put a little water on it and it'll come up. But even with that said, I still want to make sure I get good seed to soil contact in this seeding job. And when it comes down to doing the actual seeding job, of course, I'm going to show you that here on YouTube as well. So be sure and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss it. So if you've been doing this for a few years or if you've always done it, overseeded uh, your Bermuda with, with perennial rye, I have no idea what your thought process is on this, but I'm going to share mine with you. When I start this process and begin uh, the overseed, meaning I'm going to plant perennial ryegrass over top of Bermuda for the winter, I totally and completely forget that I have Bermuda grass as a yard. I just do. I just forget about it. I'm not concerned about the Bermuda anymore until the following spring. Because see, I'm growing two different turf types in the same yard. I've got one, a warm season turf type I'm growing during the summer. And then I've got a cool season turf that I'm growing during the winter. I'm going to feed them and manage them totally and completely different. And that's why when I get to the part of growing the ryegrass through the fall and winter and the following spring, I totally and completely ignore the fact that I have Bermuda grass there laying dormant. Obviously, I'm not going to apply anything to the perennial ryegrass that would be detrimental to the Bermuda, but with that said there are things you do in this process that the bermuda does not like and that leads me to my next point there may be consequences to your actions well, what do you mean about that pete well it's like this you know when your kids are disobedient they get out of line they don't listen you know you have rules in your home and when they break those rules they get a consequence meaning they get in trouble for not doing the right thing now, I'm not saying overseeding Bermuda with ryegrass is right or wrong. I'm going to do it regardless. But there could possibly be some consequences the following spring. Ryegrass is a very dense and very thick turf, okay? It actually can do a little bit of harm to the Bermuda. And what I mean by that is the following spring, when we kill off this ryegrass, we're going to intentionally kill the ryegrass about the time that the Bermuda is supposed to naturally wake up. We're going to do that to allow the Bermuda to come back in full steam ahead and become the yard again. We're going to revert back to the Bermuda when it's time for it to naturally wake up. Well, when you get to that point in time and it's time to spray out the rye and take it on out of here, it's time to pump that Bermuda back up. Sometimes you're going to be left with some naked areas as far as Bermuda goes. And what I mean by that is the Bermuda may not wake up in certain areas like it typically would. That is somewhat of a downfall to overseeding Bermuda with ryegrass. And that is the consequence that I'm talking about. So if you're attempting this the first time, or if you've been doing it for years, and this is an, a problem for you, know that sometimes it's kind of normal for that to happen. And that could cause you some extra work in the spring to get that Bermuda back up and running. That is a chance you take as a price that you might end up paying to have that green yard during the fall, winter, and spring. So there you go. Uh, for those of you that do overseed uh, Bermuda with ryegrass, you kind of already know all this, the process and everything. For those of you that don't, maybe this will help you. Maybe something you want to consider, maybe not. It does increase the cost of your lawn care. It, you're looking at a dormant Bermuda yard all year, or if you oversee it with ryegrass, you have to take care of that during the winter. Uh, it needs some food, needs mowing and that kind of thing. So it increases the time in your yard and it increases the cost you're gonna spend in your yard. So that's something you need to know going into it. So stepping away from Bermuda, now we're talking cool season, 
those of you that have ryegrass in your yard, uh, you know that during the summertime, if you go really hot and dry, it can be extremely difficult, right? Uh, ryegrass is not a grass that's intended to be grown in a super hot climate. It is on the extreme side of cool season turf as far as it needs cool weather to do good. So uh, I don't know if any yard anywhere remotely close to me uh, that has a full-blown ryegrass yard. It just, it don't work. I mean, contractors put the stuff in, in, in home yards that have just been built to get a quick germination, a quick cover, uh, quick, quick ground cover, and then it's no time. As soon as the heat hits, the stuff is gone and the, and the homeowner's left with a dirt yard. So uh, it's really not a good choice for somewhere that has a super hot climate. So I wanna be overly clear about that, okay? Me personally, anywhere that has a summertime that, I, that lasts, you know, three, four, five months long and gets really hot, you know, 85 degrees and higher, personally, I'm, I'm gonna stay away from ryegrass. I just am, I'm gonna stick with Kentucky Blue and tall fescue. They're far more drought tolerant than rye. And the only way I personally will use rye is to overseed it with Bermuda because I do that in the fall and it goes through the winter and the spring and those are cooler months during the course of the year. And of course, we'll show all that. We'll do all the, the seeding. I'll show it to you. And then I'll also show you the mowing and all that and how to take care of it during the winter. And then we'll do the kill off next spring and wake the Bermuda back up. Say so, hey, thank you for taking time out of your day. I appreciate you watching. I'll check you later.